Catholics, people of faith all around the world have been transitioning to new ways of praying in communion with one another. Before we begin our celebration, I would like to take a moment to review our new routines with you. You might recall that in the past we transformed our auditorium into a sacred space. We do the same with our classrooms today. They are now places of prayer and reflection. Please honour this transformation. You can help create a sacred space at your desk by closing your books and your computer and putting them to the side or even under your desk. If you have cell phones, please make sure that they are turned off and put away. Teachers, at this time, I invite you to light the candle on your prayer table. While we are not together physically for the celebration of Mass, your participation is still encouraged. Responses will appear on the screen for you, and we hope that you will join in. Today we welcome a very special celebrant, Father Daniele Muscolino, who is our Diocesan Vocations Director, and he joins us all the way from North Bay. Remembering the message from our opening prayer service, we begin our celebration, quieting our hearts and following that message of Christ to be humble and kind. Expect a free ride from no one. Don't hold a grudge or a chip, and here's why. Bitterness keeps you from flying. Always stay humble and kind. Know the difference between being with someone and being with someone you love. I love you ain't no pickup line. So always stay humble and kind. Hold the door, sit please, said thank you. Don't steal, don't cheat, and don't lie. I know you got mountains to climb, but always stay humble and kind. When the dreams you're dreaming come to you, when the work you put in is realized, let yourself feel the pride, but always stay humble and kind. When those dreams you're dreaming come to you, and when the work you put in is realized, let yourself feel the pride, but always stay humble and When it's hard, eat a root beer, a popsicle. Shut off the AC and roll the windows down. 
Let that summer sun shine. Always stay humble and kind. Don't take for granted the love this life gives you. When you get where you're going, don't forget to turn back around. And help the next one in line. Always stay humble and kind. To all my friends at St. Mary's College, I'm so happy to be here with you as we celebrate uh, Thanksgiving together. And we enter into this Mass uh, to give thanks uh, to God, first and foremost, for uh, many of the gifts we have, and also give thanks for the blessings we have in our life. I'm so happy to be with you. My name is Father Daniele for the new students at St. Mary's College. And uh, even though I can't be with you there in person, this is the next best thing. And I'm so uh, grateful that uh, you are able to pause today and to celebrate Mass as a school community. So I ask you today for your prayers. I ask you today to listen to God's Word and to reflect on how we can be more grateful and turn to the Lord in the many needs of our life. Let's begin with the sign of our faith. Let's do it together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Every time we gather together for Mass, we always uh, first pause for a moment. We realize that we're in the presence of God, that we're about to hear God's Word. We're about to celebrate the Eucharist together. And so let's take a moment now to reflect on our own relationship with Jesus and ask Him to help us be better disciples every day of our lives. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And as we celebrate Thanksgiving, let us begin this Mass with prayer. God, whose gifts are countless and whose goodness is without limit, teach us, we pray, to use wisely the rich blessings you have given us, to be attentive to the needs of others, and to give as freely as we have received that we may, in the joy of your house, delight one day for all eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and gratitude in your heart. Sing song, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him, the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Through his sponsorial psalms, give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited town. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Give thanks to the Lord, God's love is everlasting. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, 
for his wonderful works to human beings. For he satisfies the thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. Give thanks to the Lord. God's love is everlasting. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. During those days, another large crowd gathered. Since they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way, because some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered, But where in this remote place can anyone get enough bread to feed them? Jesus asked them, How many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground, and when he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the crowds, and they did so. They had a few small fish as well. He gave thanks for them also and told the disciples to distribute them. And the crowds ate and were satisfied. And afterward, the disciples picked up seven baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. About 4,000 people were present. After he had sent them away, he got into the boat with his disciples, and he went to another region. And the Pharisees came and began to question Jesus. To test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. Jesus sighed deeply and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to it. Then he left them, got back into the boat, and crossed to the other side. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I remember when I was in high school, which was just only a few years ago, um, I remember asking my mom and dad for lots of things. eh? We kind of depend on our parents uh, when we're in high school or people that we're living with if they're not our parents. And I remember every year, you know, asking for new clothes, new shoes, new school supplies, money to go out and do things. And when I got my license at 16, uh, you know, I wanted to always borrow the, the night. We had two cars. I wanted the nicer one instead of taking the piece of junk, you know, and all these things. And I just remember my parents, who both were working, were both sort of lower middle class people. Remember, my parents were immigrants uh, from Italy, just trying to find a better life for themselves here. And they always gave me what uh, we needed, you know. And I remember on many occasions looking at my mom and dad and really complaining that I didn't get exactly what I needed. If I needed a certain brand of shoes, I got the cheaper version. If I wanted the nicer car to borrow, I got the not the nicer one to take. And if I, they didn't have money to buy me uh, the clothes that I wanted or all these different things. And I remember just being angry with them all the time and, and really saying, why can't I have what I asked for? You never give me anything I asked for, I would complain. And years later, it took me a while to realize that they gave me everything that they could. They gave me everything that they could. I I had what I needed. I didn't need anything more than what they could give me, but they provided for me in the best way they could, and I still was fine. I still had a great upbringing, uh, and my parents worked hard for what we have. And I think of this when I hear the gospel, because did you hear what happened in this gospel reading? There was crowds of people, okay? Jesus says that there's, the gospel says there's 4,000 people gathered together in this spot. And they've been sitting there a long time. And Jesus has compassion on them because he's worried about them. He says they they can't go home on an empty stomach. Um, They might collapse. They have a long way to go and they're hungry. They haven't eaten anything in a long time. 
And he says, come on, let's gather some food. And people sort of looked at Jesus like he's crazy. Where are we going to get food to feed 4,000 people? And they gather what people had. Eh? They have little seven uh, loaves of bread, it says. And Jesus took the bread, looked up to heaven. He thanked his Father in heaven, and he prayed. And all of a sudden, this food was going out to the crowds. And seven loaves of bread miraculously changed to feed 4,000 people, so much so that they collected seven baskets full of leftovers. Huge miracle. Imagine being in that crowd and say, where is this food coming from? The food just keeps coming and coming. And Jesus took from the little abundance that he had, the little food that he had, and gave it to people in so much uh, abundance. And then, what did ha- this is the remarkable part. After witnessing this, imagine if you were there. After witnessing this, what did they do to Jesus? It says they came to him and they said, uh, <laughs> show us a sign for us to believe in you. Show us a sign. These people in this crowd had just received food from seven loaves of bread to feed 4,000 people, and they weren't satisfied. They wanted more. They wanted Jesus to say, oh yeah, prove yourself to us again. Show us a sign. And it's really funny. makes me laugh anyways. It says, Jesus sighed. (sighs) You know He kind of rolls his eyes a little bit. I can't believe that you witnessed this miracle and still are asking for another sign for you to believe in me. We do the same thing. I did the same thing with my parents. They provided for me in ways uh, that I, I needed. I was able to live a good life, and I still wasn't happy. What are the things in our life that we are still not happy with when we have all these blessings around us. You know, we're, in th- we're celebrating Thanksgiving. We're in Thanksgiving mode. Let's really focus on giving thanks for the people around us, for those who really provide for us, for those who we enjoy their company, for the blessings that we have in our life that so many people around us go without. We have to start counting our blessings and being happy with them, being satisfied with them, instead of always searching for more and longing for more and feeling like we're not getting what we deserve. You know, this year has been a tough year. All of us were locked up for a long time. Now we're back in school and we're seeing the people we missed. Let's not take that for granted. Let's be thankful for the people around us that we miss their company. Let's be thankful for the blessings of our health. Let's be thankful for the gift of our families uh, that are around us or, or, or the friends that support us. There's so much to be grateful for. And sometimes yet we overlook those great things in our life to still focus on the negative, to still focus on things that we think we need. Thanksgiving for us is a time to really thank God for the many blessings in our life, to really thank him for the things that we, he's provided us with that help us go along the way of living a good life. And so let's take a moment now, uh, and if during this celebration of Thanksgiving, to really count our blessings and not complain as much, to look at people around us and be grateful that they're with us, to look at our friends, look at our family, look at the things that we have in our life and be thankful to God for the greatest blessings he's given us. He's given us the gift of life and he continues to provide for us. It's our job to give thanks back to him and live our life as people who try to please Jesus by showing the gratitude that we have for him. All of us have someone in our life that needs our prayers today. So call them to mind now as we offer all of our prayers to God, and especially these prayers, which we offer for our entire school community. The response to the petitions is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, Father Daniele, and all clergy continue to serve, proclaim, and bear witness to the message of hope found in the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that leaders in public office see and embrace the potential of today's youth and provide opportunities for a future filled with hope. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those who struggle with mental, physical, and emotional pain find healing and consolation in Christ Jesus, who brings light to darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That we as followers of Christ always realize the many gifts God provides and faithfully give thanks and praise for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the poor and the sick, the hungry and the homeless, be granted a place at the table of God's abundance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Afin qu'il nous puisse en vivre pleinement ici la communion qui nous a donné, qui est donnée par le Christ Jésus, that we are here gathered, may live fully the fellowship that we have given in Christ Jesus. Nous prions le Seigneur. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks today for being present among us. We ask you also to hear our prayers and answer them according to your will for our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. From your many gifts, O God, your thankful people offers you bread and wine, praying that by the grace of this sacrifice we may treasure all that you give, share your gifts with others, and use them for your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but they profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. At this part of the Mass is the most sacred part where we call upon the Holy Spirit to come upon these gifts of bread and wine and change them into the real body and blood of Jesus. And so I ask you to pray with me in silence. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And together, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, we pray in the very words that Jesus himself taught us, as together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And I offer to you a great sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. During this time when we can't be together to receive the Eucharist, we pray a prayer called the Act of Spiritual Communion. And this is really desiring from our heart that Jesus in this Eucharist enters into our bodies, enters into our lives. And so at this time, I ask you to pray together this act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. O God, who in this Eucharist show us the gracious depths of your love, grant that we may share with others all that we hold in trust from you and live as a people in true gratitude of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's been a great joy for me to celebrate uh, with you this Thanksgiving Mass, and I hope however you're going to celebrate this coming weekend that it may be a joyful time with those uh, small uh, circles around you. And I'm going to keep all of you in my prayers as the weeks and months go on in your school year. And remember to always uh, count your blessings, to look at the things that we're grateful for and less at the things uh, that we like to complain about. Uh, I'm gonna keep you all in my prayers and I'm also gonna give you a final blessing here as we conclude this Thanksgiving Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for your attentiveness and participation in today's liturgy. I know it isn't easy participating in Mass from your classroom desk. Thank you, Father Daniele, for celebrating with us and for your tech crew in North Bay. And to all of the students who assisted with today's liturgy, thank you. I was so excited to have all of our lectors today as grade nine students. I would also like to take this opportunity to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Please be sure to follow the guidelines for safe gatherings. In his homily, Father Daniele spoke about blessings and how we sometimes don't realize the value and sacrifice that goes into what we do have. You were asked, Knights, to reflect on what you are thankful for and you came through. Let us conclude our celebration thanking God for the many blessings in our life.
kindness I'm in debt to you
Jesus 